Greetings, folks. This is Scott with the Game Audio Institute, and we are continuing our wonderful series on uh, audio scripting in Unity. And uh, we are about to embark on a pretty adventurous sort of thing. We are going to show you how to do footsteps for a third-person shooter or third-person-based adventure kind of game. Now, what has happened up, up to this point is we've already been looking at things like, for example, triggers and uh, playing from a list and using Booleans to sort out, you know, various states. In other words, true or false uh, variables in order to be able to sort out states. So essentially, we're going to combine almost all this logic. We're going to add a little bit more, a, a little extra stuff here and there. Um, and this might take more than one part because... At a, it's probably going to take longer than 10 minutes, you know, 10 to 15 minutes to explain this all. But we're going to basically show you how to get started on this. But let's give a little bit of a conceptual basis on how we do uh, a third person kind of game and, uh, you know, in that kind of situation. So let's go switch over here to this. And so basically the deal in the particular case of a third person, of course, as you know, is you have an avatar in the game that has feet, presumably. You know, you might have a snake or something like that or a bird as well, but whatever. In that case, you're not doing footsteps. Uh, so in this case, you have a player and they have footsteps. So you can certainly, you know, look at the footsteps and use those as a basis for doing what you want to do. So in this particular case, it's going to use physics and it's going to use switching plus an identifier of some kind or another, which is usually like a tag, effectively. Now, it's a little bit tricky, depends on which way you want to do it. So there's a lot of different ways to approach this. This is merely one of the ways that we're going to basically do this stuff. And there's, there's a lot of different possibilities. This is the way we're going to do it at this point in time. So it can either use animation events. That's what we're going to be using. So an animation event is a very, very common thing in games where basically... Uh, you actually create a situation where at a particular frame in an animation, you're going to be able to trigger a particular event. So as you know, there's uh, animations that basically make the character walk around inside the space. So essentially what you're doing is you're going to be able to line up the colliders on the... F and another, another option basically is using colliders on the feet. So just visually speaking, what happens is you have a step event at a very specific frame right? That's going on. Now, again, this does not actually mean that the character physically is stopped or, or anything like that. It can mean that, but it doesn't automatically mean that. But it does mean in this case that the animation has gotten to a point where the foot is planting itself on the ground. And then that is where you basically place the step event. In the case of a collider-based event, you would put a collider and you make it like an is trigger situation option where basically you treat it as a trigger so that when the character hits the ground or walks on the ground, it's going to cause the collider to make those events happen. In our case, what we're going to use is the animation events. And we're going to use some other kinds of conditional stuff as well when we do this. So let's see here. So what happens is once we trigger the event, so what happens is that basically an animation event triggers a function inside a script uh, using a public void. And the idea is that you're going to look for the fact that if the player is on the ground and moving past a certain speed, obviously you want the player to be on the ground. So there has to be a way to detect whether a player is on the ground and moving past a certain speed. Basically, that's the idea, okay? So once, so in other words, there's a check to make sure those things. So players on the ground is either yes or no. Moving past a certain speed is either yes or no. You know, that kind of thing. So the idea ends up being is if, that, if both of those conditions are true, we can continue to go on ahead. What we're we gonna do, we're gonna basically get the list of the audio clips based on the surface. Now we've already played, we already talked about audio clips lists, what are called arrays, right? And that's what we're gonna be working on is an array. And we're gonna basically get an array based on the surface. Now, it's a little bit tricky to talk about how we're gonna get that stuff. So just assume it's magic for now. Uh, essentially the deal is, is that we're going to get that information based on some kind of physics interaction with the surface that we have. And it's kind of like a separate thing. But the idea is that once we do that, we're gonna actually have a variable 
that variable, unlike being, let's say, a float or a you know a, an integer or a string or an audio clip or even in this case, it's actually going to be a list of audio clips. Our variable is going to be a list of audio clips, and then we're going to select which list we're going to be doing based on this physics interaction. So just assume that that's magic, and we've gotten all that, and we get that, and we go to the next step. The next step then is. We have now selected the audio clip list, and now what are we going to do? It's the same exact thing that we were just covering when we were covering the trigger one. So the idea in that case is we're going to select a random clip from that list, and then we're going to play that clip. So basically, that's a rough idea of exactly what we're going to be doing. So let's talk about how we go and do this inside the game. Okay, so now the first thing to explain about what we're dealing with inside here is we're going to be using individual footsteps. It may seem obvious to a few people that are already here, but just, just so you know, whenever you're doing this kind of stuff and you have individual footsteps inside the game that are happening, remember how this is all interactive, right? Because our player could stop at any point or anything like that. We can't use lists of of audio footsteps. We could try and do it and it would kind of be okay. We could kind of get by, but it's really, really, really a kludge and it's not a good idea. There are definitely games in which they use actual loops of footsteps and that kind of stuff, but it's not gonna be in a high quality sort of situation. So any kind of sort of higher kind of quality game where you really have player footsteps and stuff like that, you, you're gonna also wanna potentially have speed, right? You know, walk around in the game or run around the game faster or things like that or slower. And the idea is you want the footsteps to be able to go with that. If you use an actual audio clip of footsteps that you get from a sound effects library or something like that, it's never going to work because it's based on a particular kind of pace. And that's, you know, you have to hope that basically your pace is, is, is going to match that essentially. It's just never going to work out very well. So you're not going to basically do it that way. What you're going to do is you're going to cut it up into individual steps. Okay. You're going to have individual steps and you're going to have, in order to prepare for this, uh, you, you need to have the, these steps for, um, in this case, you can do whatever surfaces you want. In this particular demonstration, we are going to do tile or stone rather, and we're going to be doing um, metal footsteps, okay? And technically our robot is, is sort of metal, but whatever, you know, it's, it's okay. So we're gonna basically be doing it as if he has a, sort of like high-heeled shoes or boots or something like that, something with a bit more of a, of a really clear attack or whatever like that. So the idea then ends up being, you're gonna go and cut up each individual footstep that you got inside the, the, the game and then what you'll want to do is you'll want to bounce them all out as individual sound files, you know, that kind of stuff. And the idea is that you have the footsteps folder and the idea ends up being is we have different ones. And if we can go over here, you can take a look and we have it on autoplay at the moment so you can kind of hear it. But you see that what happens is that we're gonna basically edit the file so that it has almost no silence at the beginning. And we wanna make sure that we keep the space at the beginning pretty much exactly the same. So every single one of these footsteps is going to basically have pretty much the same exact attack point, essentially, okay? That's gonna be very, very important. If you don't do that, if you have space or too much space, you'll very quickly feel like all of a sudden you're walking around drunk. Not, a not, not to mention the fact that it will actually also have a sync problem because, you know, the footstep will happen at that time and then it'll be slightly delayed, which won't quite work very well. So we're going to basically do that. Uh, and, you know, here's the metal ones. We have these metal ones. Okay, so there we go. So that's what we got basically going on. Now the ends, those can be, you know, slightly different. They don't have to be exactly at the same time. So you can have sound lengths change a little bit. They don't have to be exactly the same length, right? But the idea ends up being, because what happens is we're playing this with play one shot. And if you keep in mind what play one shot does as a concept, play one shot can actually create instances or copies of the sound. So they can kind of overlap each other a little bit if they need to, you know, it's not a big deal. All right. So, so let's talk about how we get 
animation events. So animation events are an incredibly common thing to do inside game engines, and they are the preferred way to do things inside game engines. If you watched our special on how to think like a game designer, you get a rough idea of what we're, what we're basically talking about. We cannot wait for things to happen inside games because of the possibility that the frame rate will be different than our audio triggering option. So what we need to do is line up our sound triggering with our animations as, f as close to a frame point as possible, basically, in order to be able to get things as synchronized as possible. So that means, let's say, if you have like an attack animation, something like a Final Fantasy sort of thing, where you're like a turn-based tactical sort of situation, where you're basically attacking with a group of people and each one has to attack in turn, and they have the special animation that they do when they do that kind of stuff, that is a pretty common situation where you're going to use these kinds of animation events. This is a much more simplified version of that, but we are going to do that. All right, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are in the character folder under assets and the animations folder underneath that. And then you're going to look for this walkin.anim file. Okay, we'll go into all of the stuff about how that, why that's important and everything like that. But for right now, let's just take a look at this. Now, in the case of this case, this is going to be an actual FBX file. I mean, it's a binary file, essentially, at this point in time. Um... So we can only edit it in the inspector. So we're going to basically add our animation events in the inspector for this. And to do that, we're going to look at the animation tab right here, and we're going to scroll on down. And then we're going to basically look all the way under here under the events section. Now that's probably like, you know, scrolled up anyway. But in this case, what you can do is do this. And then what you want to do is you want to focus in on the feet of your character. So this animation will then move, and you can actually kind of move it right here through this, and you can actually see that there's animations moving. So the idea is you want to take that left foot, and when you go there, you're going to see it get to a point where it's clearly hitting the ground, and then that's where you're going to be able to put your animation event. So in this case, to put an animation event in here, you're going to click this thing over here, and you want to rename this new event to, let's see, how about play foot step and we'll just call it that okay and for right now we're just going to do the each individual f we're not going to do each individual foot we're just going to do a footstep event for each foot and the next one we got to go on we're going to scroll again and we're going to hit this again till we hit the right foot and watch it get planted on the ground right about there or so and you know we can move these later on if we need to do that kind of stuff but we're basically going to stick another one in here and say Boom, that's the other event. And our other event is also going to be called play foot step. Make sure I got it right. There we go. Now that we're done this, we've actually made a change to a binary file. In order to do that, we have to apply those changes to the asset. Whenever you have an asset that changes, you have to apply those changes to the asset. So we're going to do that like so. And that will basically take us through. All right. That's all for this ha part, and we're going to be doing more parts and stuff like that. Stay tuned and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, leave a comment or like things, or not like things if you want to. Uh, and if you want to are interested in this sort of stuff, uh, you know, we also have a Patreon, and uh, you can fund us if you want, and uh, you, know, you can get access to the scripts and the projects and stuff that, that we're doing for this particular uh, demo, and we'll be happy to help you out either way. I hope this helps get you game audio on, and we will see you again next week. Mm -hmm.